We're pleased to have that great cast of uh, Lethal Welp Weapon, The Leisure Years, first via Skype from Blue Ridge, Georgia, former Florida police detective Tom Watley, and right here on the anchor desk, political commentator and Newsmax insider Clarence McKee. Clarence also spent some time not so long ago, although he says it seems like a long time ago, as chairman of the Florida Association of Broadcasters. Guys, we very much appreciate your time today here on uh, America Talks Live. Now, being here. you wrote an article, Clarence, that is on our parent website, Newsmax.com, and I want to get to that in just a mm -hmm. little while. But first, as president-elect, is Donald Trump being an effective communicator by engaging in a Twitter war with the New York Times? I don't think it's a war. I think his Twitters um, are really managed. I don't think it's, it's just fly-by-night. It's planned, uh, maybe unlike in the campaign. I think it's good. Uh, the New York Times can't tell someone how to run a transition team. I was on the first Reagan transition team. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, the Trump people should take their time. You've got 65 more days. It's a big effort. People hear the word transition team. Well, it's more than that. It's dozens of transition teams for every single agency, independent agencies like the FCC. Uh, every agency has its own team. So what you're hearing now about a transition team is just the top layers. There's a lot more to do, and you can't be rushed. So he's doing it methodically. That's good. Tom Wadley, as you're there in your mountain home up in Blue Ridge, Georgia, looking out over the vistas and gaining perspective. You know, it, it's amazing to me that so many of the corporate media outlets want to do the exact opposite of what Clarence is talking about in his own experience, which is, of course, the fact that it's only been a week since the election. Exactly. And, and the Times is saying that this is chaos. It's a, it's a transition in disarray. What say you from that bucolic mountain scene today, Tom? Eagle Mountain, Georgia. You, you know what, J.D., here's the thing about his Twitter account. Yes, it's going to be controlled, but what's really neat about his Twitter account, until 12 noon, January 20th, he's not subject to FOIA. He can basically type what he wants, but I think they're going to do like they did with Obama. If you recall, he was really heavy on his, uh, um, he had, uh, you know, he was doing a lot of texting and stuff like that. So I think they end up taking his phone away from him for a while, and then uh, then he went to the POTUS account. So I think it is uh, he's going to be what we expect. 60 million people, they want to see this out of him. They want to see his reaction when the media is slamming him. And he's going to win the war with the media. I know it's usually not the case, but he will win the war. Well, it's because, it would seem to me, hearts and minds have been prepared, Clarence. For example, there is a post-election poll our friends at Newsbusters and YouGov put together and take a look at, at some of these numbers here. According to that Media Research Center poll conducted by YouGov, nearly 70 percent, 69 percent of voters do not believe the news media is honest or truthful. And 97 percent went on to say, Clarence, that they did not let the media bias influence their vote. And I guess we could see that with the election of Mr. Trump last week. That's why social media is becoming more important. That's why he's using the tweets, because no one trusts the major media. New York Times is becoming something even to be used for your dog and your cat in the afternoon. No one believes it. <laughs> A bunch of journalists in their ivory towers um, who had never seen anything less than $60,000 a year in their careers, looking down their nose at average, hardworking Americans, black and white. So they're, all they are, Correct. we used to talk in broadcasting about news directors sitting in their TV stations during the news and watch each other. And what's going on is the media, New York Times, Washington Post, they're putting this stuff out for each other so at their cocktail parties they can say, nice editorial, nice op-ed. The middle class folks around the country don't listen to them and don't respect them. All right, well, let's listen to callers since this is America Talks Live. Calling in at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629 from Long Island. It's Ben. Hiya, Ben. Hi, good afternoon, J.D. How are you? Doing fine. What's on your mind, sir? Good, good. I have a question regarding federal elections and basically the way they're run. We run a federal election like we just had, really almost like a third-world country. I'm a big believer, always have been, in states' rights. And if you're voting for a mayor of a city or a governor of a state, that's fine. But I think that when you have a federal election, like a presidential election, every state should have the same 
rules and guidelines for those voters. For example, one state says you need ID, another one says you don't. One says you need a picture, one says you don't. One says you can vote you know, a month early, another one says you can't. Mm. Another one says this, another one says that. There should be one standard. And that standard should apply to every state. I understand every state can have different hours because of the time zone. But the voters should be subjected to the same scrutiny and the same rules and same regulations in each and every state. I think without that, you're letting the state make decisions which they, should, which they have no right doing the federal election. Well, it's an interesting thought, Ben. I think, remember, though, federalism works both ways, and there are states' rights. Perhaps what should happen is the uh, there should be a conference of the secretaries of state, and this is just the idea off the top of my head. I'd be interested to see what Tom Lotley thinks about this, stipulating that uh, we're going to return to paper ballots, get all these machines out of there, and have people clearly mark ballots, and, and a statement of principles that would preserve uh, the rights of the states and ensure what's going on federally. But But what do you say to Ben's idea of federalizing at least the federal part of the elections, Tom. Yeah, I, I don't know. Boy, that's a slippery slope, as you know, and, and you being a master of the Constitution as well, um, everybody would be have to, have to be on board with that. And uh, I, I just, I, I really don't see it being federalized. I, I can't see it. There are certain rules to get on the ballot uh, with the federal federal election system, but I, I really can't see uh, all of you know, all of the states trying to get on board with that. I think you're not going to tell us how to run our elections, whether it's electronic or paper ballot, because some places the electronic may work well, and some pa places the paper may work well. So, uh, and then where does the funding come from if you mandate everybody go to paper or everyone go to uh, uh, electronic? So, it's, I think it's uh, very dangerous. Well, let's talk about a different kind of election. I don't know about the ballot integrity, but both parties in the world's most exclusive club, the United States Senate, held their leadership elections earlier. Mitch McConnell remains as the Republican leader, but of course, Harry Reid, with that nasty screed about Donald Trump yesterday, he's riding off into the Nevada sunset, or should we say the neon sunset of Vegas. Chuck Schumer is taking over as the uh, Democrat leader. Here's what uh, the senator from New York, a new Democrat leader, had to say. We had a great meeting, uh, went very smoothly, uh, and I am humbled, truly humbled and honored to receive the, report, the support of my colleagues uh, to be the next leader of the Senate Democratic Caucus. So there's Chuckles, as I used to call him down in the House, Jim Clarence. He's got the gig now as the Democrat leader, uh, he's a New Yorker. Donald Trump's a New Yorker. Does this set up almost a dynamic, or am I reading too much into the the, the Tip O'Neill, Ronald Reagan friendship across party lines that we saw 30-some years ago? And then it was civil. It's not civil anymore. First of all, you can't trust Chuck Schumer. He's never met a camera he doesn't love, okay? Uh, he could smile at Mitch McConnell, but he was right there behind Harry Reid, egging him on. So right off the bat, we know that as soon as Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, if she survives a vote, get a chance, they're going to start sending arrows right at the back and heart of Donald Trump. So all these niceties won't work. All right, what Can't about it? Uh, well, let's go to Tom, who's dealt with many a uh, hostile witness and maybe a couple of guys he's uh, had to cuff up there. Uh, you're, dare we call it, a profiling of Chuck Schumer. Do you share Clarence's assessment, or are you a bit more hopeful? we got about a minute here. Yeah, I sure do, and and I think Harry Reid just needs to go off into the sunset, and it just sounds like he's just sorry. He's supposed to be helping to pull this nation together, and I've heard some of his speeches, and it's just not going that way. Uh, in fact, I think he's even helping enticing some of the disturbances around the nation if he would just tell, we need the leadership, and he's the number one leader, to say, hey, let's all pull together, let's give the guy a chance and see how it works out. But I'm just not hearing that from him. I, I really do wish he would go away. <laughs> Cynicism yeah. overcomes civility, but guys, you're so civil, we want to keep you here. Again, it's our informal cast of uh, Lethal Weapon, the Golden Years, Clarence and Tom. Now, now when we come back, Clarence has uh, written a column for Newsmax.com. I alluded to, it, alluded to it earlier. He'll tell us who, in his mind, uh, turned out to be the biggest losers of last Tuesday's elections. And we're going to get Tom's comment on uh, a disturbing video that came via live streaming from Iowa. Some woman recording as she berated cops who only two days earlier were dealing 
with the execution of one of their colleagues. What has happened in the world? You got to see it to believe it. And you can call us about it too at 1 877 Newsmax. That's 1 877 639 7629. There is more straight ahead on America Talks Live. 